Hello all, I am so excited to walk you around our newest exhibition, Grant Wood Revealed Rarely Seen Works by an American Master today. Uh, this Art Bites will obviously be a little bit different than ones we've done in the past, uh, but I will be available after the video for any questions that you had about anything that you saw. And I certainly hope that you come in and see the exhibition in person when you are feeling comfortable doing so. Our museum is very clean and masks are required. Um, and it's a wonderful series of exhibitions that we have on view right now, so I hope you can take advantage of them. All right, let's get started. So the first gallery that you will walk into looks at Grant Wood's decorative pieces from early in his career. Uh, and so this includes a lot of metalwork. This is the fire screen ornament, which was on view for many years. Uh, decorative lunettes that were done as commission for people's homes. One of my personal favorites, this beautiful um, star painted screen that would have been used as a room divider. And next to it, I'll zoom in a little bit here, these beautiful ornamental gates. And um, so Grant Wood was really well known amongst a certain set of Cedar Epidians early in his career, um, not just for his paintings, but also for his interior design and metalwork. Uh, so this gallery represents a lot of those early commissions, um, and it was really fun to see them all together. Judy, our wonderful preparator, deserves so much credit for troubleshooting all of the issues that come with bringing up very, very heavy, lots of heavy uh, metalwork pieces. They all have different parts and have to be attached in different ways. So Judy deserves an immense amount of credit for all of the creative problem solving that she came up with to get these up here safely um, and to attach them to the walls. One of the more striking pieces in this gallery is Grant Wood's peacock lamp, also from the 1920s. And this is hovering just above a beautiful case uh, with some of his smaller metalwork pieces in it. We have his really beautiful necklace um, from very early in his career that's mother of pearl and copper. One of his very early self-portraits, which are so popular. And then some other work that he did uh, making a medal for Charles B. Keeler, a local, local notary. And so you can see the early attempts in plaster while he was working out the design and then the finished model in bronze. The adjacent gallery continues our look at Grant Wood's commissioned work in his early career in the 1920s. Uh, and so there's a whole section here that deals with the cherry series of paintings. Uh, this is kind of the beginning one here. This is the cherry building, which we can still see in Cedar Rapids today. And then we continue on with the entirety of the cherry series in order. As you can see, as I dip below here, the frames are numbered. Uh, we are missing number one, but we have two through seven in our collection. Uh, so it's really fun to see them all together. I am particularly fond of all of these because I enjoy the interesting shared palette that they all have. Um, along with the deep, rich browns and grays and dark blacks that you would expect to see in industrial work, they also have a really interesting shimmery, like pastel blues and yellows as we can see on this lovely gentleman here in 10 tons of accuracy. Um, and so these are from 1925, very early in Grant Wood's career. And this is when he was still largely painting in the American Impressionist style. But one of the really cool things about the Cherry series is that they very much anticipate his mature, hard-edged, more stylized approach to art. Uh, you can see here we're definitely very very far removed from the brushy, uh, paint-loaded style that he was working on in his landscapes during this period. Again, the really beautiful pale blues that are in these works. I'm just, just obsessed with it. The welder's torch there is really wonderful. And my personal favorite here is the shop inspector. Um, again, that palette that I just can't get enough of. Um, and these paintings were meant to celebrate the new dairy equipment that was coming out of the JG Cherry Company. Um, these paintings were reproduced in brochures and taken to trade shows. But they are really portraits um, of the men in them as much as they are portraits of the machinery. And Grant Wood hadn't done a lot of figural work until this point in his career. So I think the Cherry series uh, is a real turning point in his early career in the 1920s where he really starts focusing on the human figure. 
Moving on to our next gallery, uh, this one has a wall focused totally on Grant Wood's very early work. Um, so everything that we see in this sextet here is from 1904 when Grant Wood would have been 13. Uh, and we can see really how advanced he was. These two still lifes up top are my personal favorites. And again, you can really see what a beautiful job he was doing so early in his career. Uh, his use of cross hatching here to create depth and texture and interest is something that we can see in his mature drawings as well. So this is something that starts very early in his career and that he comes back to a lot. Uh, so I thought it was fun to put all six of these together and kind of see the 1904 work all at once. And this whole wall looks at early pieces, things that he did for school, uh, some more advanced watercolors that he got into a little bit later. Watercolor is never a huge part of his career, um, but as we can see from this Return of Columbus, it was a medium that he was quite good at, and watercolor is very difficult, so that's always been impressive to me. Some of these works are glazed, and so they're a little bit hard to see on the screen. Uh, this is a really charming early oil piece, and it's a cat um, being frightened by a fox skin rug, and it's hard to see with the glare here, but it is really charming in person. We also have some works that he did for high school yearbooks, societies, and man of the class. Um, and another one of my personal favorites is this bearded man sketch, again, very early in his career. And, you know, just done on a piece of lined paper, but I found it so charming that I knew I had to include it. So adjacent to this wall, we pivot to European works. And if you've been to the museum lately, you know that all of Grant Wood and Marvin Cohn's 1920 works from their uh, Grant Wood's first trip to Europe are currently on view in Americans in Paris, which is upstairs. Uh, so there isn't a chronological feel to these because the whole 1920 trip is in a different part of the museum but all of the European pieces are here. And so as I said, these are all very impressionist and brushy with very thick paint. I'm being very indulgent here, so we're seeing all of my personal favorites up close. But this Medici fountain is absolutely gorgeous. I think the way he handles the colors in the water is really stunning. I've always been very fond of Grant Wood's impressionist work. I think he worked really well in that medium, um, and he had a lot of fun with it, which is really fun to see. So yes, another watercolor, again, kind of unusual for him. One of his rare paintings from his sojourn to Italy when he was in Europe in 1926. Uh, this is a double-sided painting. There is an Iowa farm scene on the flip side, but this one is such an interesting, unusual work for Grant Wood that I knew it had to be up. Grant Wood got really into painting doors on his 1926 trip to Europe. Uh, and so we see this whole series of portals and doorways that he was very interested in. Uh, I always love the detail in this one and the door kind of hiding in the woods, a very romantic version of it. Uh, these are two really interesting pieces. As you can see, they are nearly identical. The work on the left is from a private collection and was done in 1926. So he probably did this work when he was in Europe. And the work on the right that's in the museum collection that we acquired in 1932 is a larger version that he completed after he was home. So when I was looking at the piece that we were getting as a loan, I was, you know, oh yeah, I think we have a really similar picture in our collection. And then when I had them next to each other, I'm like, oh, they're absolutely identical. Uh, so that was a really fun surprise. And it is a true Highlights Magazine delight to have these two right next to each other and to compare and contrast how they're different and what he changed between the two versions. And we end this gallery with his 1928 piece of the market at Nuremberg. Uh, 1928 is traditionally seen as kind of one of the boundary markers of his career, uh, that he went to Europe to work with the Emil Freistein Glass Company, working as an American Impressionist, saw all of the high Renaissance German artists in the Alta Pinacothek um, and other art galleries in Munich, and came back you know, committed to working in his hard-edged style. There's not a hard and fast line like that, but 1928 is an important date for him. The center of the gallery really celebrates Grant Wood drawings. So there are these three early pen and ink ones, again, from quite early in his career. Um, and this is celebrating local history. So we're going through some early Cedar Rapids scenes here. And we'll follow the wall all the way around here. Hopefully I'm not making anyone too nauseous. 
Um, and we continue drawings on the opposite side of the wall. And this is three different depictions of different parts of the so let's say the cherry building, uh, the Turner Mortuary, where of course he moved in in 1923 and lived there until he moved to Iowa City in 1935. And he did this really wonderful series of drawings, both in pencil and in ink. And again, these are glazed, so we'll get some back glare here. Um, but a really, really wonderful series. And Grant Wood, I think, is such a, an amazing draftsman, which is something he might not get credit for all the time. Um, but just this really wonderful series, we can see the delicacy of his drawings um, and definitely a testament to how much he appreciated the patronage of the Turner family. We start the next gallery with his Impressionist paintings of the Cedar Rapids community. So these are again from quite early in his career. This is the old Sexton's Place from 1919. And we continue around with Old Stone Barn, my personal favorite, uh, the, the Van Antwerp Place. I just adore the colors in this one. Again, we're still seeing, you know, very impressionistic, incredibly thick use of paint, beautiful dappled light. Uh, it has this imperfection in it, which is one of those things that once you see, you can never unsee. Um, but his use of color in these works is absolutely spectacular. And I love his use of shadow, which is something that he carries through to his more mature pieces as well. Uh, and of course, we wouldn't be Grant Woodophiles if we didn't have a whole section on Indian Creek, and so that's what follows up here. Starting with these two pieces, which I always thought look very kind of art deco and jewel-like. His simplification of the tree forms definitely anticipates his mature work. Uh, these are both very tiny but very stunning pieces. Uh, and then we move into his more traditional size of 15 by 13. So there's a whole series of Indian creeks here, which I kind of tried to put together uh, by season. So we're starting with spring into summer. Again, super thick application of paint, wonderful use of color. And thankfully, none of these are overly glazed, so the glare isn't too bad here. Yeah, I love the use of bright reds that he kind of pops into these paintings in different places. It's really, really wonderful. And now we're getting into early autumn. And here you can see what he often does in these works, which is goes back in with a sharp implement. Uh, you know, perhaps the butt end of his brush or, you know, possibly a palette knife. And he creates texture. So he goes back in and kind of scrapes out the paint, creating this wonderful texture that really does speak to, like, the forest undergrowth that we would see. My two favorites are these autumn pieces. Again, I'm just obsessed with the color and the texture that he gets here. Um, and Indian Creek was a favorite place of his in Cedar Rapids. And I think this one might be my absolute favorite. Uh, I think his use of color in these trees with the little, little blips of blue is absolutely gorgeous. And we have lots of good examples of his signature here. The middle wall in this gallery is devoted to Grant Wood's still life. So here we have two wonderful examples of his floral still lifes. Uh, the more famous one of these is probably Calendula's, which we see here. Uh, it's such a, an amazing, beautiful contrast between the yellow and the ochre of these flowers and the beautiful turquoise and blue of the background. Uh, he doesn't do a lot of still lifes in his career, um, but we can see he is really, really quite good at them. Still in that thick application of paint part, and I think such a really good job delineating the texture between the smoothness of the ceramic vessel, uh, the vegetal forms of the flowers, and again, the incredible shadow work that he does here in the background. Continuing here on the other side of the wall with old shoes, which I always assume is kind of speaking to Vincent Van Gogh's painting of the same subject matter. Such rich color, really beautiful, loose, brushy work here. Uh, definitely still in his impression. Uh, and here we have another piece from a local private collection. This is Sunlit Studio. Uh, and so this is what his studio at Five Turner Alley would have looked like in 1926. If you've been on a tour of Five Turner Alley, you know we always talk about how creative he was with, uh, with storage and these beautiful niches that are carved here that he used. A uh, wonderful window seat, a Sansevieria plant, of course, is very much associated with Grant Wood. Um, and also just a testament to the wonderful light 
that was in that studio. You know, he bumped out a window and added the cupola, so he was really interested in getting as much light in the studio as he could. And the rest of the gallery is devoted to portraiture. Uh, and so this is perhaps one of Grant Known's best portraits. Grant Wood's best known portraits, excuse me. Um, this is Frances Fiske Marshall, which is one of the few portraits that he did that was done posthumously after she died um, unexpectedly in 1929, and he was asked to do a portrait from pictures. And um, so this is alongside, of course, our study for Grant Wood's self-portrait, one of our newest acquisitions, this wonderful drawing um, of James Bever Norris that Grant Wood did on the Grampian when he and Marvin Cohn were returning from Europe in 1920. And we have a whole wall dedicated to children's portraits, first with Gordon Fennell, of course, holding the wonderful ball here. He does the hands so beautifully alongside Sally Stamates, who is holding a block. I always loved that he did that for the children. And if we have a wall dedicated to children, we need a wall dedicated to Cedar Rapids notaries. Uh, this is Portrait of Judge Porter from 1929. And you can see we are well into his mature period here. We've really reduced the use of paint. It's much thinner than it was. Uh, we are well into his hard-edged, stylized aesthetic. Uh, this, I would say, is very similar to the portrait of John B. Turner that we always have on view. Uh, they're looking a similar way. This one doesn't have quite as exuberant a as that one does, but it is next to our portrait of John B. Northcott, another prominent Cedar Rapidian that Grant Wood did a portrait of in the late 1920s, which, as you can see, was used in a community chest ad. And our last gallery has the famous corn chandelier in it. Uh, this, along with a series of corn-themed murals, was a commission that Grant Wood got uh, from Epley Hotels. These were specifically for the Hotel Montrose. Um, and so they would, would have been part of the corn dining room. And traditionally, the corn chandelier would have ideally been with the other metalwork, uh, but because there is a very involved process of mounting this, there's really only a few places in the galleries that the corn chandelier can be. Uh, and so therefore, we are having a moment of recreating the corn dining room in here with both the mural and chandelier. This gallery also looks at Grant Wood's illustration. Uh, here are two works that he did for hired, or excuse me, this is the hired girl from Farm on the Hill from 1936. Uh, and I've always been really struck by that such strong orange background color that's so unusual and distinctive. Uh, this was part of the frontispiece that featured a lovely grid of simple drawings like this. Next to the corn room mural, we have this tiny work from 1932 um, that I always like to have right next to it because I think it really uh, looks back to what he was doing for the corn room murals. Very loose and brushy, which is unusual because this work is from 1932 and he was well into his mature style. Uh, but it really looks back to his impressionist work that he was doing then. You can see he's scratching out parts of this one as well. And to round out our corn theme, uh, this is another private collection work that somebody very graciously loaned to us. A wonderful corn drawing in charcoal with absolutely spectacular details to it. He had such a sense of line and composition.